Hi folks, I am Florida Man, your one and only diplomacy superhero, and I'm bringing you a video today about a game where I made the clever, tactical, and strategic decision of starting a war where everyone was, at least for a little while, all attacking me. It took place a long while ago, so I'd like to say this occurred because I wasn't as skillful at the game as I am now. I was a little bit too aggressive and stabby, as you'll see. The game took place so long ago that I had to recreate the game's images using Backstabber's sandbox feature, since Play Diplomacy stops storing the images from games after some period. This game is also known by the name Socialist Group Meets in British Pub, and it can be identified by the game number 92123 if you're on Play Diplomacy and would like to look over the orders or the public press. I played as Russia in this game, and I had a very successful beginning. I had good exchanges in 1901 with both Turkey and Austria, and at this point I didn't have any opponent, except in the sense of players who were about to be unexpectedly attacked by me. As you can see in the opening, England did not open north, Austria did not open to Galicia, and Turkey did not open to the Black Sea. That left convenient openings in two of those three places that I generously filled. In fall, you can see that my early success was tempered somewhat by the other players' reactions to it. Although England remains focused in the west and convoys to Belgium instead of doing anything against me, Germany does bounce me in Sweden, which I was far from happy about. I picked a side in the south, and in a gesture of friendship for Turkey, I vacated the Black Sea and kept my unit in Galicia, supporting myself into Romania. Italy does move toward fighting Austria as well, pushing units toward being in position to attack Vienna and Trieste next year. In the build phase, France gets a southern fleet, Italy gets a new Venice army, and Austria, Turkey, and I all get armies. I'm not sure why Turkey thought another army would be best here, except that I believe the plan was to reassure Italy and keep them on side. In spring 1902, you see that the effort to keep Italy invested in the war with Austria was successful, and although Austria and MRs, they would have lost some ground no matter what in any case. It's going so well that actually I'm a little worried. Italy and Turkey together could, now that Austria is not defending itself, turn on me if they chose. The fact that neither of them has built fleets yet means they'd have more trouble fighting each other at this point than fighting me. Elsewhere, we see that Germany and MR and France is supporting Germany, which was seemingly based on a concern that the German player would be attacked by the Italian player, whose units were equally well positioned to attack Austria or Munich. The interesting thing about that is that France might have been allied with Germany, and I am familiar with the French player in this game from other games. The French player is a notable, unusual player because he will always keep any alliance he forms, until the other player is eliminated or the other person stabs. He is a perfect Care Bear. So if he's allied with Germany, that tells me that unless Germany surrenders, the French player will be loyal to him until the ship sinks. In fall, the German player actually does surrender. I make an agreement with Italy to work together against Turkey and split the Balkans between us, and my new commitment leads me to reoccupy the Black Sea. I also walk into Berlin and Sweden, since the German player is not around to stop me. The only unfortunate thing is that England also chose this moment to walk right into St. Petersburg, as if that was something I'd just let go of. Having acquired Budapest, Serbia, Berlin, and Sweden, I get three new armies in the build phase. Per our new alliance, Italy builds two fleets. The new Germany gets an army, while France gets a new fleet. I believe France and I were talking at this point, possibly in a group chat with Italy. I love forming alliances with Care Bears, because they don't betray you, and that means eventually you'll have the chance to stab them and go for the solo, if you're patient enough, and nothing else goes wrong. In spring 1903, you see I'm moving everything to attack Turkey in the south, and preparing to retake St. Pete in the north. Italy and I don't completely coordinate this season, which is unfortunate, since I could have guaranteed Italy got into Munich that season. With a new player joining as Germany, we aren't going to have any free shots at German centers anymore. On the bright side, at this point, the three-power alliance between France, Italy, and myself is in full effect. We each know more or less what the others are doing, and we're all agreed to walk hand-in-hand hand toward the noble end goal of a three-power draw, unless I can get a solo, in which case I had my fingers crossed. My thinking at this point is that I can either stab Italy pretty soon and take him out, or I can get Italy to stab France. If that happens, France would still feel bound to work with me, but I can make Italy the bad guy, and cause him to be France's target. That conflict should open up a gap for me to solo. In fall 1903, I do try supporting Italy into Munich, but it just cancels out the simultaneous German effort to retake Berlin. I succeed in retaking St. Pete, which is nice, but we don't make any progress against Turkey in the south, except for a convoy into Syria. Since Syria is not a center, that's not yet a great victory. Turkey played very conservatively, which worked out well for him, for now. 
France continued to grow in the West, and I'm not particularly happy to see that France is growing a little faster than me. As we see in winter, France gets two builds, I get one, and no one else is doing anything. Spring 1904, England stops issuing orders, and I simultaneously reposition to attack him. Italy, France, and I continue going after Munich, and on the bright side, Germany doesn't defend it anymore. Also, this time, Italy and I completely outfight Turkey. On the one hand, Italy and I both play more conservatively, and Turkey has fewer units than us. On the other hand, Turkey still makes decent choices to counter the moves we made. In the west, with England and MRing, France takes London and moves to take Edinburgh. My odds of solo are dropping precipitously as France grows, with France growing more rapidly than me and Italy growing at roughly the same speed. All 1904 Italy and MRs, but it doesn't matter, because Turkey is very weak now and I get to sneak into Constantinople thanks to him countering Italian moves that don't actually hit this season. Here, I make a mistake though, and it's probably the fatal mistake. I stab Italy, distrusting that player for not communicating during the season. I support Germany back into Munich, which wouldn't normally be that bad of a mistake, we could turn things back around pretty quickly. However, this shakes the trust we'd been delicately attempting to establish, and it clearly, in retrospect, undermined my plan for the win. In the build phase, I get two new fleets and an army. Spring 1905. It's at this point that everyone is at war with me. Italy and I are attacking each other in the south, Germany retakes Berlin, I'm continuing to try to fight Turkey, and now France is advancing against me at sea in the north. Fall 1905. At this point, I am frantically negotiating because the game has gone completely sideways now, I did not properly juggle the diplomacy at all, and now I'm on the verge of getting pushed out of the Balkans and probably Scandinavia at the rate things are proceeding. Unfortunately, I am still fighting a losing world war with me versus the world being a rather unfair matchup. In the build phase, it almost feels as if I'm the only one not building. Technically, France doesn't either, but you can see France will probably get some dots pretty soon, and there's a good chance some of them will be from me. I have no realistic prospect of gain unless I manage to change something diplomatically. Spring 1906, I lose control over all of Scandinavia, because Germany and France are each launching independent attacks against me. You will notice that France simultaneously moves into Edinburgh, which France would not do if Germany was an ally, so there are some potential hopes in evidence. The lack of coordination will make it difficult to impossible for them to advance against me beyond the centers they've just grabbed. At the same time, I make up with Italy, so we both regain ground in the south relative to Turkey. All 1906, unfortunately, Italy decides to be vindictive, and even after we had supposedly made up, and I'm committed to the alliance again, he dares to betray me and occupy more of the Balkans. I appeal to France, trying to use the Care Bears' nature to gain sympathy, pointing out that I thought we had reunited. In the build phase, I destroy the units on the front line with Germany, so I can devote everything I still have to defense. Italy and France grab a couple of new armies each, which is pretty ominous for me. Spring 1907. Italy and I are still not really made up, and the wrestling back and forth continues in the south and center. On the bright side, by the fall, it's clear that France and I are on sort of good terms again. Given that the two of them, though, are clearly tighter than I am with either of them, I propose a draw at this point. And the draw is accepted, even by Germany, after how badly that last season went for him. And the final board position looks like this. It's funny, toward the end, there was some dialogue in the public press from France speculating that I wouldn't accept a draw. From my perspective, though, I was doing rather poorly by the endgame, which I think was entirely because I made the mistake of putting myself in the position of fighting a multiple front war and having no firm allies. And that's just a complete unforced error. The only real explanation is that I was paranoid because of Italy's lack of messaging, and so I allowed myself to go off script. And all that really happened that season was that Italy NMR'd because, I don't know, maybe he forgot he was playing a game of diplomacy. Whatever the case, that threw off my plans completely, and in this game I think it's clear I was lucky to be as strong as I still was by the end and to be included in the draw. The moral of the story, folks, is don't start a war with everybody. If you're in a group alliance with a Care Bear, don't stab anybody in that alliance until the Care Bear is already on your side, and um, don't be too paranoid. If someone is radio silent with you, and also radio silent with the other people allied to them, maybe wait a little while before you assume that they are an enemy now, or that they are no longer going to be playing the game or something. Don't instantly stab. But all of this just goes to show that 
patience is an asset in diplomacy. Some players need to be more aggressive, and some players need to be more patient. I hope you liked this video. If you did, you too can participate in helping me make and promote great diplomacy content, either by joining my supporters on Patreon or by writing subtitles for the videos in other languages, in addition to liking, subscribing, and commenting, all of which helps this channel grow. Follow the links in the video description or comment below for more. And I would like to briefly thank the people who are already helping me out via the methods I've mentioned, whose names and screen names are on the screen now. Let's keep going and make this the biggest diplomacy community out there. Let's try and hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Until next time, Florida Man, out.